Hey all, so I've got an interesting interview online now, uh, which is with Mr. Phil Mann, who's basically launched his new website with Base in Mind. And it's a way for him to bring together all of the different projects he works on as a freelance bass player um, and educator. It's really interesting. I've known Phil for quite a few years, but we're actually in kind of rival covers band, so we didn't really get to hang out that much. But obviously, I've always been aware of kind of what he's up to and Phil's projects are always very varied and interesting so I kind of wanted to speak to him about this. Some of you will know Phil from Scott Space Lessons where he's one of the tutors and um, some of you will know him just from uh, being a bass player on the scene. This is my first interview that I did over Zoom and it kind of works so hopefully there'll be some more like this. Anyway, please listen to the interview. There was obviously lots I had to leave out because we, we talked for about two hours in the end. I just wanted to give you the really important nuggets of information. Please go and subscribe to both of our YouTube channels and also give us both a follow on Instagram as well. I'll put links in the description below. I really hope you enjoy this. Um, over to me and Phil talking over Zoom. So normally this is what you introduce yourself and you tell me who you are and what you do. That's, how, that's generally how it works. So do that, please. Okay, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce myself to uh, a very long-standing colleague who knows more about me than probably myself. Uh, but I'm Phil Mann, and this is this is Jack Scenes. Um, so that's all good now. Uh, yeah, uh, for anybody that doesn't know me, I'm I'm that London Cockney rambling bloke that's on Scott's Bass Lessons. Um, writes for Bass Player Magazine, Bass Guitar Magazine. That's the US and American. Um, I'm a, a visiting member of the visiting faculty for the Player School of Music in Florida, um, and I was a long-term part of the faculty at the Bass Institute in London, the ICMP, I believe this phrase now, but I'm not teaching it anymore. Um, and for the last six years, I, I've been an intricate part of, of Scott's Bass Lessons, uh, which is, I'm, I'm very proud of, I love Scotty to death and the team. And, and this week, uh, I think the way way that this fine gentleman's got in contact with me is because yesterday I've just launched With Bass In Mind. It's just an online platform. With Bass In Mind publications first came out in 2012. Um, I launched my first book on With Bass In Mind publications at the base show when I opened for Marcus Miller. So actually that was 2011. So this is ninth year of it now. So With Bass In Mind is actually is not a brand new thing. It's been going nine years. It's been going before I was with Scott's Bass Lessons. I think I've still got the Hillenden Borough under 14 to 400 metre record. Uh, I was going to be training for British Harriers, uh, which is the feeder team for the Olympics. I was a mega athlete when I was a kid. I was nowhere near as chunky as I am now. Um, and uh, I was training. Uh, my knee started going um, and I had some respiratory issues when I was a teenager uh, that that stopped all that. Everyone's got their story, right? Um, I was going to be a professional bass player until I broke my finger, um, but it doesn't matter. You know, I, but the, um, that's, that was my anvil. And I, I said, well, I, if I'm going to go into stay in this field, I, I was really inspired by physiotherapy. So I, I was going to be trained at Winchester University to be, to be a sports physiotherapist. I did all my A-levels, five A-levels for that field. And in the summer, um, I was riddled with jealousy uh, because all my mates were in a band and they had all the girls going around to their garage and hanging out. And I went, that sounds like fun. And I went over there one day and um, his name was Dean Birch. He was like the school bass player. He had an area pro MAB 20, I remember. And I picked it up and went, this is awesome. Uh, and in that summer holidays, I went home and said to my mum, I'm not going to be a physiotherapist, I'm going to be a professional bass player. Now, when I had finished ducking from all the porcelain being launched at me across the room, um, I took 16 months out. I, I ran six part-time jobs. I was working in a bakery and then going back to the bakery cleaning. I was a florist at the weekend, all this sort of stuff to get the money together to go to, at the time, Base Tech and study under Rob Burns, uh, who was writing for Basis Magazine. That was the lure. Um, then I did that degree and then I became a working bass player. I, was, I'm, I'm, I still am. And I worked function bands. I was very lucky. I had a, a beautiful function band um, that toured all the world. I got to go everywhere with them uh, from Egypt to Dubai to China, uh, all of Europe, I think. Um, 
And then I did a master's degree in jazz um, uh, in London. And I went, do you know what? There's something I'm not quite getting. So I went to America, I lived in America, I studied on the Jeff Berlin to get shit happening because I just wasn't getting the gigs that I wanted to do. And Jeff unplugged everything, rebranded me. And I think the man that came back from Florida in 2010 was not the man that went to Florida. And I think anybody that knows me before that time, I hope would have a different impression of me after that time. Um, I've heard myself, I know what happened musically and I did grow as a person. And I don't think it's any coincidence that everything that I'm proud of in my career happened after I studied on Jeff Berlin, not before. Um, uh, everything, um, mm. every gig, every credit, three Grammy award winners now. Um, I'm not punting myself, I'm just saying facts. Um, the books, the bass guitar magazine, bass player magazine, my own bass guitar, the affiliation with Ike, beautiful company, great amplifiers, and all these wonderful things that I've done with Scott's Bass Lessons came after I studied with Jeff Berlin. And, um, and now today, this week, uh, I, I became a Nashville recording artist. I did my, yes. first, I did my first album this week um, at Music Row. And that was because of a wonderful young gentleman called Hunter Hayes, who I played with at NAMM two years ago on the Vox uh, Demonstrar State. He's a, he, I think he's, he was one of the days with five country Grammys. Massive, massive, 32 million selling artist. But we don't know about him over here. Um, mm because he just basically, you better answer that. Uh, but, the, you know, he gets all that, um, uh, that publicity. And that bounced on to, to, to this wonderful session that I, I did this week. So for the first time ever, I can actually put my CV that I recorded on Music Row in Nashville. Um, nice. I know, I'm very proud of it, Jack. Very proud of it. So, but the same as the whole music industry, um, I, I was doing the Jersey Boys tour this year and it was cancelled in January because of the COVID-19 crisis. Hmm. And I had to completely reform my career. And, and that's what gave me the time. Nathan Watts is king. I won't have a bad word said against him. I love him. I grew up on R&B. You know, I've done a couple of sort of pilgrim trails to, to Memphis. Uh, Stax, is, Stax is my church, man. I, uh, you know, Duck Down Marjays and, and all the stuff that came out of there is, is, is the stuff that I adore. Um, mm. I, I, I like R and B. Um, I was lucky enough to go to Muscle Shoals. I was lucky enough to go to Fame High, uh, all within the last two years um, on, on different trips, and obviously time in Nashville and, and Memphis generally. That whole Tennessee quarter of music, but stuff I grew up on uh, was all R and B based. Players. So it was you know it's Dave Hood and all the stuff that he did with Percy Sledge and 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 his, and down at Fame. Then all um, you know all the like Chuck Rainey stuff with Aretha. Aretha's my queen. She's all I ever listen to. At my house, you come, it's like the, the soundtrack to my house is Aretha's on 24 hours a day. Um, and uh, I think actually Young, Gifted and Black was on my phone before I took this call up. I had to switch it off when you came online. Um, but yeah, Chuck Rainey, you know, uh, Jameson, not as much. That surprised people. It's... In, in 2000, in 2007, I moved out to America and I lived in America. I, I, was, uh, I formed a wonderful friendship with Jeff Berlin uh, and JB's been one of my, my closest friends. We talk very, very regularly. Um, when I turned 40 last year, I was in Nashville. He took me out for pancakes. Uh, when I, at NAM every year, we go for ribs and drinks. We're, we're friends. Uh, away from the music and the academia and all that sort of stuff, we, we're good friends. Uh, and he's a beautiful man. Uh, he really is a good man. He's got a very a very droll, dry sense of humor. And he's very, in a typical New York addressment, very abrupt. And I think sometimes he can be mis misportrayed. But I, I went to Florida. Um, I studied at uh, the Player School of Music, uh, which was, at the time, that was Jeff's platform. These days, it's a Jeff Berlin Music Group, which is his new academic platform, which is in full affiliation with, with Bass in Mind. Um, but when I came back from Florida, I was, I was so compelled by what I'd learned. Everything that I had studied, and this is in no disregard to the beautiful teachers that were part of my life before that time, Paul Scott, uh, Rob Burns, Terry Gregory, that were absolutely seminal in my development as a musician. And without them, I, I wouldn't be anywhere. I, I love those people to death. But they were, I learned everything from a contemporary basis. And my, my understanding of academia wasn't as deep. I didn't understand harmony 
and theory and the use of melodies and resolution, that sort of stuff. So when I went to Florida, uh, it, it very much drove me down that pathway and, and opened my eyes, increased my awareness and, and, and made me a much more complete musician. And when I came home, I thought, I, I want to share this. Um, so I started writing a, a diary. And that's the thing, uh, the, I, my first book, uh, Core Tone Concepts, uh, The Excavation of the Humble Triad. Mo Foster hates that title. He's always like, The Excavation, you're not digging. The book was nothing more than a diary. It was what I studied. And what was basically the catalyst for what I feel was a seminal point in my life as a developing musician. Uh, when, I was a stud when I was a student at the player school, I worked from trombone books. It wasn't bass. It was all, everything I studied was trombone. Um, and I thought, well, he's, Jeff said, hey, you should publish this. And I went, what? He goes, yeah, I did a chord tone book in the 80s. This is like a, a, an updated version. I'll even do the forward for you. And, and we did that. And we released that in 2011. So this is nine years ago. It was released at Base Day, uh, Base Day Manchester. I was on the bill uh, with Marcus Miller, open for Marcus, which was an incredible honour. At that day, when, when, when I opened for that, this bloke came up to me and he said, uh, he said, can I have a word? I said, yeah. I said, what's up? He goes, uh, I've been going around. I'm trying to get some lowdown on education. I said, okay. And he said, and everybody I speak to, and I asked them who, where they've studied and who their teacher is and stuff like that, they keep saying your name. And I said, oh, cool. And he said, I was wondering whether or not you wanted to come and do some, you know, team up and do a bit of work or, and I said, okay. I said, well, what'd you do? He goes, oh, my name's Scott. And I'm putting together a platform and I think you'd be a really good academic chatter. And that's when I also met Mr. Divine. So that relationship started all the way back then. But the book, when it was launched, nobody gives a crap about who I am or, or my background. I hadn't played with anybody. My, my CV is a bit different now. I'm very honoured. Uh, I'm by no means Stevie Pearce or Phil Mulford or, or Ian King or these wonderful session bass players in London. But I, I, I've, I've carved my own, little, my own little revenue now um and hopefully a sustainable career but at the time i had to underwrite everything so i was like right i'm going to write a book and they said okay and publishers went who are you who are we going to sell this to we don't care mm. and they said we also want to put a stem on the book and i was like no man it's got to be ringbound so it's flat on a music stand that's ludicrous so i said i don't do you know what i'm going to do it myself and i self-published so to release core tone concepts volume one it was released on With Base In Mind publications. Uh, so With Base In Mind started in 2011. Core Tone Concepts, Volume 1, Volume 2. Volume 3 is out this year. There's the plug. Um, the first two volumes have sold in 32 countries, six continents, nearly 2,000 copies now. The only reason it's not a bestseller is because I self-published. If that was actually published and uh, Nielsen, who are the company that tracks all that stuff, that would probably be like the best-selling bass text on the planet for a couple of years. It really was that big. I'm massively honoured and I wasn't expecting it. The first one, not so much the second one. I think I talked too much in the first book. Uh, but the <laughs> I was teaching at a, an institute of music um, and what was happening was that I just felt like the guys were getting a raw end. They were like, you're not being taught properly. You're not being taught all the stuff that counts, which is going to give you a sustainable career. So I wanted to cut loose and do my own thing, you know, and, and, and to, to make sure that I could actually deliver the right things to the right people in a responsible way, whereby if you come for bass lessons with me, I'm not the best bass player in the world, Jack. I'm not the best teacher in the world, but I'll damn well do my best to make sure that you get the most out of your time with me. If you, Jack, came to see me, first of all, there's no subscriptions to With Bass In Mind. That's important. The only thing you'll pay for is one-to-one -one lessons with me. Okay. That's important that people recognize that. But if you do do that and you put yourself under my wing and say, let's work on some stuff, uh, I will give you a load of discount codes, which will enable you to go to my affiliations. The first one, if you're having remote lessons, the guys are going to need a great quality interface, DAW, to be able to plug into their computer um, and do the tasks that I set them. If we have a one-to-one -one lesson, I record every lesson. I send a post email with the constructive alignment of what I expect you to do. 
And then you have to send me a recording of you doing what I asked you to do. And my one rule with all of my students is if you don't send me a recording, I don't allow you to book your next lesson. And when you get back, we then go to the next level. But I'm not going to keep giving you information for money. I will teach you what you need to be taught. I used a couple of different interfaces. I'm not going to talk about other brands, but most affordable interface, which does what I need it to do, was Ashdown's Tone Pocket. They also need some good quality headphones. You know, if you spend a long time under headphones in isolation, you can get nasty things happening in your ear canals and stuff like that. People got to look after themselves. So I spoke to Meters, which are in partnership with Ashdown. My guys will get a discount on Meters headphones and DAW interfaces. So that's good. That improves their relationship with me on an academic level. If Mr. Jack Stevens comes to me and says, Phil, I want to learn to read base. Like I want to learn to read dots. No tablet should do it because I see the sustainable benefits of that. You know, as, as I'm getting a bit grayer and a bit fatter and, and the pop gigs don't, I was a time when I was on stage with Peter Andre. I don't know why he doesn't book me now. Um, but as a result, I'm going to have to rely on different academic, you know, skills. So I contacted Jeff. I said, look, Jeff, I will send my guys to you to buy all the programs. And then I will teach just your materials in my lessons to make sure they're the best quality I can give my students. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's not about me. I don't, I don't get any personal gain. I don't take a cut from Ashdown on Tone Pockets and Beaters. And I don't take a cut on uh, Jeff Berlin's sight reading materials. My students get discount on those three disciplines, JB, and Ashdown so that their experience with me remotely is going to be better. Other than that, the, the website's kind of like a Wikipedia. Uh, there's, everybody's given little donations. There's transcriptions that are free, tab free as well, I'd like to add. And, um, and that's, that, that's a collaborative effort, right? Yeah, there's different people right now. Um, I've, I'm just, I'm doing, it, I'm doing a, a transcription of Mo Foster's I Could Be So Good For You, uh, the Dennis Waterman tune. Um, so, yeah, so Mo's doing a little video like this. There'll be a video on there. The transcription, the first transcription came from Paul Scott. It was published in Basis magazine back in 1998. Um, so going forward, I'm hoping to contact different people um, and get their insights. Jeff Berlin's just doing uh, a proofread of my transcription of Joe Frazier. Uh, and he'll do a little video about that. Um, and then uh, I've just got a little chat with Norman Watt Roy coming up. Um, I'm going to talk to Jerry Meehan from Robbie and Stu uh, Zender, Stuby uh, from uh, Jamiroquai and, and bring those resources together so, it, so that everyone can just say their piece. You're not hearing it third person. You can be a potential student of yeah. yours and then you get those affiliate stuff, but you're also just seem to be offering transcriptions as well. So, is it, so how, much, how much of it is just free for everyone and how much of it is exclusive? Um, 98% free. At the okay. moment, yeah, definitely. If you go onto with base web base in mind, um, there's there's a you've got a couple of obvious CV. Who's this guy? Why should we listen to him? So you've got like uh, excuse the pun, okay, but the man, the books, the base, and the lessons, okay. So the man's just my CV. There's you can go on there. You can watch videos with me, with with Van Morrison, with Albert Lee, with Leo Sayer, with um, Bastine Baker, that's really cool. There's loads of live videos. So you can say, cool, there you go. That's, there's him on stage doing what he does. So yeah, you've got the man, you've got the bass. I've, I've had a long-standing affiliation with Overwater since about 2002. It's nearly two decades now. Um, they did this wonderful bass called a Progress 3. And I picked it up and fell in love with it. And the Progress instruments have been part of my career from 2002 to today. I've still got a pair of them. But then when I started getting gigs like the Motown show and I, you know, I did Grease and Hairspray, the Jersey Boys, I did loads of touring, most of my stuff touring rather than sort of Broadway. Um, I had to use traditional instruments. So I contacted Overwater and said, look, can we, can we make a progress in a traditional housing? And that's when the film man signature came out and, and I was lucky that with all the exposure with the magazines and Scott's Space Lessons, it's not luck, it's hard work. There's, that's all there is to it. It's graft, hard mm. graft, because I'm not the best bass player in the world. I might be the hardest working though. Uh, I, I don't think there's many people that put in 18 hour days every day and I do. 
so that affiliation came around and as as a few credits came onto my cv uh that i'm i'm very fortunate and very proud of um the, then chris said you know what maybe because your specifications are quite unique mm. let's make it your base um so I did. So yes, yeah, so you got the man, you got the base. It gives a whole rundown. Mm. Uh, so the Phil Man base is a custom and a standard. Marvin, uh, all my bases are Looney Tunes characters. That's hence the, the the laser inscription on this. This is the the standard. So it's like a fender construction, whereby it's got not got a flash top on. It's just a beautiful one piece of ash, one yeah. piece one piece neck rather than a laminate three piece neck with which is quarter sawn on my on my custom. Um, so just things like that. Um, the books, because I was self-published, nobody could ever find the damn things, <laughs> you know? So there's a portal call. And then the lessons. So the lessons, after you've read all that, you go, oh, maybe I want to get a one-to-one lesson with him. Right now, you can just, the only thing you pay for is the one-to-one lessons. Actually, the video lessons that are on with Base in Mind, they're free as well. Um, I did, a, during the COVID um, crisis, pandemic, what's been happening around the world, uh, to help uh, the UK economy, uh, we was uh, in affiliation with Liam Gallagher, Ben, Liam Gallagher's tour manager, put together NHS Fest. NHS Fest rose, we rose over £160,000 for the NHS in Britain. Wow. And uh, yeah, I know, right? What a figure, £160,000. And to say thank you to everybody that contributed, I said to Ashdown, look, I'm going to go live completely free for the whole weekend. And, and I did... I did eight hours of free base lessons. I constructed a course and put it all together to just have the lot. Uh, just to say thank you for everybody that chipped in. Then there's the affiliations. There's some stuff, some sample stuff from Jeff. He's given us that so you can go and check that out. Um, I've been writing for Bass Player Magazine and a Bass Guitar Magazine for about six years now. I've just, I've just cleared my 100th article, um, which I'm deeply proud of. Um, and in the last two years, uh, I started writing for Bass Player magazines. Well, actually, September 08 was a seminal point in my life because I saw my face on the front of both magazines for the first time. And me and my mum went to buy it and we came away with the entire newsagent's infantry. We bought, <laughs> we bought all of them. I don't believe in the word session musician. I don't think it exists. I think a much more realistic thing to say these days is a portfolio musician because this week alone i've done three reviews for bass guitar magazine bass player magazine product reviews for different products uh you know ashdowns plugins all that sort of stuff i've done um book sales i've done over i think about i had about 42 hours teaching this week remotely i launched with bass in mind um what else did i do oh i did uh lawn riley's new album uh so that was uh that's being produced over in music row in nashville but i did it all from my home studio here so in one week i've been a journalist an author a web designer a one-to-one mentor and teacher um and a bass hooligan in the studio a, a, a nashville session musician if that's the thing um and that's what i did in one week i'm not a session musician am i that's a portfolio because uh, there's too many avenues, but with base in mind is about bringing that all under one roof. Uh, okay. And that's what it's never been before ever. There's it's, it's I've worked for a hundred different careers. I'm like a chameleon and, and everyone be like, Oh yeah, I kind of film man. And I think everyone does that same face. It's like that bloke, is that him? Because I've got a very small footprint in many capacities and that's what's given a, a, a sustainable career, uh, which is, which is vital at this time of year with COVID. Um, so, uh, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful, but it's been dogged determination not to, not to let my head go under during this period. So, yeah. I've never known a workload like it. Um, as it is today, this is my fourth day running where I've had about three hours sleep. Um, when we spoke at the beginning of the week, you said to me, have you not even got half an hour? And I was just like, I, liked, I actually looked at my diary and went, no. That, that day, I had 13 hours teaching, 13 hours. So back to back. Like wow. finish at 5-2, start on the hour, finish at 5-2 from 9 in the morning till so 8 in the morning in Australia till 9 at night. So in a, in a week, I normally do a, anything between 45 and 60 hours teaching at the moment. That's so, insane. 
Yeah, yeah, I've, I've worked very hard to do it though. That's the whole reason why I stopped doing the Base Institute stuff. I wanted to do it remotely and teach worldwide, uh, do my own hours. Because obviously, when, you know, when I'm, if you're touring, you get blocks of work. So by doing remotely, I wasn't, I wasn't being restricted by things like term times. So when I was at the institutes and at, and at colleges and things like the, the, the guest stuff at the player's school, um, the satellite teaching in Boston, and then, uh, and then the Institute in London, with those three paces, they're set term times. I was like, well, that's no good for me if I'm on the road for three weeks and it's right in the middle of a term and they say you're not allowed to step it out. So I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop and I'm going to do my own platform, but I'm going to do remote teaching. And therefore I can tell my students, right, I will be working between this window, look, book it solid, and then I can cut it and go on tour and then come back again, but I can do it all remotely. Um, this last trip over to LA, which was in January um, for the Hunter Hayes stuff. And when I was over there with that, with Vox, I managed to teach from my hotel room. This, this week I did, um, started a, a massive affiliation with Ashdown. I've just done all of, I did, we did three days worth of sessions at Ashdown. Um, and that was filming all the Sweetwater um, product stuff for, for Sweetwater Music over in the States. Um, which is like their version of Toman, I guess, uh, if you're not familiar with it. And um, that was the first time I've been out since March. Uh, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very solitary person. I, I, I stay at home, I work, I write. Um, if I'm not doing the magazines, I'm doing my books. If I'm not doing that, the last three months has been buried with, with this website launch. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I've just designed a, a third instrument for Overwater. Thank you, Phil, so much for that. It was really interesting and it's really exciting to see what With Base in Mind is all about. Please, if you haven't done already, um, go and give us both a follow on Instagram and subscribe to our respective YouTube channels. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.